before we go on, let's talk a little bit more about color. When I've been using my pen up to now, it's been black. And the way I change my color, I'm going to talk about this more in the color section, but there's this color wheel down here and it's set to black, this circle right here that I can drag around to make any other color. And as, you, as I change this, you notice that right here, this color is changing. And that's because this is our foreground color. It's the color that we're using right now. We also have right next to it our background color that some processes are going to use two colors and it lets you select both of these and keep them in use. So I can change to this one by clicking on the, the purple or whatever color you have here. And now it's purple and then I can change back to black, the foreground color. So you can see it's just highlighted. And down here we have our, uh, this bottom square thing is our um, transparency. Uh, it basically creates transparency. So instead of making a line, it actually clears the line. Similar to the eraser, but um, slightly different process. Okay, so I'm going to change back to our foreground color. And so we looked at some of the changes we can make to our tools right here on our tool property menu, but there's actually a lot more changes that we can make. And if we click on the double handlebar, I'm sorry, the double, <laughs> double wrenches, uh, we'll get a ton of other options that we can look at. So I'm going to go over these with you and just remember that like a lot of these are very similar on a lot of the other tools that we'll look at the airbrush, the pencil and so on. They all have similar items to these. There's just a few alterations in each one that, um, a little unique possibilities of the tool, but, uh, these are the main things that we're going to look at. So brush size, we had talked about a little, Ink is basically, you know, opacity and things like that. We're going to talk about combine mode when we get to our layer section and coloring section, but we can look at this mixed ground color. This is, um, when we check this, it's going to give us like a possibility of kind of getting the ink to behave a little more like paint. If you look at the beginning of the line, it's hardly noticeable, but there's, there's actually a, like a white look to the beginning of it. And you can kind of alter how much this is affected. That's a little more noticeable. And you can play around with this to actually get it to, to almost behave like paint. There's other tools that are more paint like, but if you do want your ink to look like paint or whatever, you can play around with this. Next we have anti-aliasing. We already talked about it. Brush shape is how it sounds, the shape of your brush. If I pick one of these other ones and click on apply brush shape, it's going to make it look like that. So let me find something else that's a little more noticeable. Oh, I didn't click apply brush shape. So these are stars and so on. And to get it back to normal, just click trash and select the G pen again or whatever tool you're using. And then brush tip is the shape. It's a circle right now. You can change it to squares, triangles with other materials that you can find. Hardness is kind of the edge of our, our tool, especially gives it a fuzzier look and I'll turn it back up to the maximum. Oh, you know what? I left the, uh, the mixed ground color on. That's why it's doing that. Okay, so going back to brush tip, we have also thickness, which is kind of the uh, the shape of our brush as well. Let's this is more like a calligraphy pen now, so you may want this for handwriting or something like that. I'm going to turn it back up to the maximum, and yeah, brush density. You can play around with these. Spraying effect is how it sounds, like gives you a look like spray. So it's hardly noticeable. If I make it a little larger. There we go. So you can see it's like uh, like a spray paint almost. So play around with these. 
square deviation is basically how how closely it stays in the the path of your your circle or whatever your shape is so you can see these are pretty tightly in the middle but if i put it to the edge it's going to spread way out so i don't want that oh actually that was particle size excuse me <laughs> i turned the brush deviation on so it's like almost exactly in the circle right now but if i turn it up it's much more in the center so clear that stroke is I'm going to let you change from like a continuous line and change it back. A continuous line. And if I turn this down, the gap on the stroke, it's going to become more like a bunch of little dots. And you have to get it smaller to notice. Turn this up. There we go. So you see it's actually little dots instead of a continuous line. and you can tweak this as well. And any of these that um, has a box next to it, that means that you can click it and it'll create an eyeball. And that means that it's now on our tool property menu, which is nice because some of these, if you use it a lot, you want it like accessible. And if you don't want it, just unclick the eyeball and it's gone. Texture is a, we have a variety of materials that we'll look at later in our materials section. But if I click one right now, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to just do mermaid. And you might not see it until you turn the texture density. Oh, you know what? I need to turn this back to normal. So the stroke, I'm going to change the gap back to normal. And texture, mermaid, turn the density up and you'll really see it. If I make this wider, or maybe not. Let's see. Oh, you can see it a little, but uh, it's hardly noticeable in this texture. Let's try a different one about cotton. And that's still not very noticeable. Some of these are pretty subtle if you're using black. Um, I think marble is pretty easy to see, I remember. Let's start on a new area. There we go. Okay, so you can see that it's actually affecting the texture. And if I layer it, it's going to actually get back to just pure black again. So if you want a single layer, then it'll be uh, pretty consistent. And you can tweak this. Lots of little changes you can make. Border of watercolor is kind of the edge of your line. This is going to be more noticeable if I use color. So I'm going to change to just a color on here. And let's see, I'm going to turn this up and turn the luminosity up so you can really see it. And I make this a lot thicker. And it uses a lot of processing. Actually, maybe that's a little too large. That's really eating the processing. <laughs> it doesn't like that. So let me turn this down when it finishes. Oh, wow. See, this sometimes happens. This is kind of a good uh, you need to be aware of your computer's limitations and the tool that you're using. If it really slows down like that, you may just have to either get a better computer or modify it and work within the constraints that you have. Um, let me turn this size down. Actually, anytime you put the, the pen size that large, it's going to give you issues, I think. And let's look at this now. Okay, that's a little better, but it's still running pretty slow. You can tweak this. I haven't used this in a while. It's really running slow. I think maybe because I'm zoomed in. I don't know. But, but you can see what it's doing. It's instead of having the color all merged together, it has this kind of border and there's there's another tool that we can do this with too that I'll look at later, but for now this is just one possibility. I'm going to uncheck it though. Erase, we're going to talk about more with vectors and eraser tools, so don't worry about it too much for now. Correction allows you to make a lot of little changes. I already said I recommend maximum stability, but that's up to you. 
if I change this back to black and clear the canvas, let's uh, post correction is something I kind of like. It's going to, if I check it, and I actually keep it on the main uh, tool property menu, but usually I keep it on the minimum, unlike stability, which I like the maximum. I just like one level of post correction. If I have it on the maximum or any higher one, it's going to change a, a line into a much different shape from what I intend. So let me show you. If I go like this and then release, it totally changes the shape of the line. And I don't really like that much of a change, but some of you, you may want it for whatever reason. You know, I don't know. I tend to like just on the minimum, which is, you know, hardly even noticeable. That's the kind of line I like, the control that works for me. Brush stroke is kind of the speed that you're working at. It's going to change and kind of keep carrying the line along. I don't really like brush stroke. Um, if I do it on the maximum, let me show you. It just, it, I lose control of the pen almost, and I don't really care for that feel. Um, so I tend to keep this on minimum of one. Uh, for some reason, my pen got messed up. I don't know if it's a, one of the settings that I did, or it could be just my driver got messed up. But if something like this happens, you can always reset all your settings. As I said, just clicking this circle right here, and that'll revert everything back to the original settings. And I believe now it'll behave normal again. Okay, so let me show you the rest of these. Uh, able to snap is with rollers and grids. We'll look at those later. You can just leave that checked for now. And let's see what else. Make corner pointed. I don't usually use this, but if you make a sharp, uh, you make a sharp edge or a sharp corner, uh, it'll add this point. I don't know if you can see that. See. I'm not really illustrating this well. <laughs> Let me show it again. Okay, there we go. So that, that little kind of tapered look is not my hand doing that. That's the program. If I uncheck it, then it's more like a rounded corner. I tend to like the rounded, more natural look, so it's up to you, though. Starting and ending is basically the starting and ending of your line. I, uh, right now, I have the start here and the end here. I can change that, though. Um, if I want to change, the, for example, the brush size, I can kind of pre-specify how it's going to look. And the more, the higher this is, the more it's going to actually affect it. So until I release, it doesn't do anything. And then when I release, it really changes it. It really kind of tapers it off. I don't really like this, but... This may have its purpose if you're drawing hair or whatever. Yeah, or if you want like a more cartoony look. Some people like this, and it really just depends on the style you want. And there's no right or wrong with these. You can make any of these work if you kind of persist with them and play around with them. I do not use these though, so I'm going to turn it off. And anti-overflow, the last one is going to do with uh, reference layers, and we'll talk about that later on. Yeah, so again, you can uh, save your preferences to how you like. Keep the, I like it maximum, and I like, like I said, the post-correction on my, my tool property menu and a minimum value. And then I'm going to close this, and to make sure these stay this way, I'm going to click on anti-aliasing, I like maximum too. I'm going to click on the wrench and then click on it again, and now it's saved my settings. Now in addition to changing the size right here, I also have, I'm going to make this larger, these uh, kind of presets that I can just click on and get an exact value. If I want a 170 size pen, I just click on it and it's always 170. And obviously it has my beginning and ending pressure, but that's the size set on here. I don't really like these. I tend to not use them. And there's also on here though, a slider that I use because sometimes when I keep the page like really compact, 
it kind of makes this slider really small and kind of short, whereas this one's still pretty, uh, pretty good size. So I tend to use this one more and keep that on there and keep these kind of hidden. But again, that's your preferences, your work style. These will, if you, if you're working like on the same size, like a page every day, if you're doing like a newspaper strip, then these may make sense. You may want always to have characters with, you know, a hundred, um, size sides on their faces or whatever. So it just depends on your use.